When I committed to keeping you up to date with information about the research going on with multiple sclerosis, I had no idea there was going to be so much. I'm having trouble keeping up. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam and I've been living with multiple sclerosis for almost 40 years. As the weeks go on, you're going to see maybe someday I'll finally get to post some of the videos that I'd already made, but they keep getting bumped because I keep finding new information and I just can't wait to share it. But it looks like I ended up having to wait after all. I found an article that I'm going to have a look at with you. When I saw it, I was originally pretty excited about it because it more or less compiles a lot of the new drugs and treatments that are in the works, many of which we've talked about here. It was put out by Multiple Sclerosis News today. I just saw it today, which is October 23rd, 2024. And it's a list of the experimental treatments for multiple sclerosis. And this is nice to have them all in one place. As they say in the overview, there's no cure for MS, but there are therapies approved to treat the disease and manage symptoms. A number of experimental therapies are also currently being tested in clinical trials, ranging from symptomatic treatments to those that target the underlying cause of the disease. Eventually, this research may even lead to a cure for MS and we certainly hope so. Some of the therapies currently being developed to treat MS and its related symptoms are summarized below. I wish I better understood their rationale for what they pick and what they don't, because I know for a fact that they know about other therapies since they're one of my primary sources for the information I share with you. But as we go through them, I'll make a note of the ones that I know we've talked about before, and I'll link videos below where appropriate. So we'll scroll through these. I will read you the description. We won't click on any of the links, but I will put up the link in the description. You can read it yourself, and if I have made a video on any of these, I will also link that in the description. But the first one is ATA 188. ATA-188 is an experimental therapy being developed to treat progressive and relapsing remitting MS. It consists of EBV T cells that selectively identify and destroy EBV infected cells, EBV meaning Epstein-Barr virus, as I think most of you know, which could reduce the antibodies that those cells produce against the myelin sheath and ultimately slow or halt disease progression. ATL-1102 is a therapeutic candidate for relapsing forms of MS. It is an anti-sense therapy designed to reduce levels of CD49D, potentially reducing inflammation and disease progression. It has been tested in phase two trials in MS patients. And anything that reduces inflammation is going to be helpful for both relapsing and progressive forms because inflammation is kind of the core mechanism that drives smoldering MS. Next is CNMAU8. It's an experimental therapy being developed to treat patients with MS as well as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, and Parkinson's disease. Preclinical studies have demonstrated that CNMAU8 is able to protect motor neurons from severe damage and death. A phase two trial is currently recruiting MS patients. So this is the one I made a video on it. It's about a gold solution that I believe you just drink. Um, and they are recruiting. So you might want to check into that one. I will link my video below. Ibabrutinib is an investigational oral medication to treat relapsing MS. Ibobrutinib blocks the BTK protein and prevents the activation and function of B cells and subsequently curbs T cell function and inflammation. Two phase three trials are currently recruiting participants with relapsing forms of MS. And again, you might want to check that out. Fenibrutinib, we've talked about this one. 
Phenobutanib is an investigational oral therapy being tested in people with relapsing forms of MS and primary progressive MS. An oral small molecule, it is designed to slow MS progression by preventing certain immune cells from driving the inflammation that damages nerve cells. I'm really interested in the mechanism behind this one because it looks like it's getting at smoldering MS, and I agree with Professor G. If we don't get at the smoldering MS, we have not cured MS. The next one is GA Depot. I have to say, I don't think I've heard of this one. It's a long-acting formulation of glutyrimer acetate. Well, that's interesting. Copaxin, which is what I was on for about 10 years, that is under clinical investigation for relapsing forms of MS and primary progressive MS. The active agent in GA Depot is a synthetic protein that's designed to mimic a piece of myelin. Ibutalast. Ibutalast is a potential oral treatment for all forms of MS and other neurodegenerative disorders. The therapy has been marketed in Japan and Korea to treat post-stroke complications and bronchial asthma for more than two decades. Positive results from phase two trials have been reported. And the next we have lipoic acid. Lipoic acid, also known as alpha-lipoic acid, is an antioxidant available as an over-the-counter supplement that is currently studied as a potential neuroprotector for people with MS. In animal models of MS, it has been shown to reduce inflammation and degeneration of the optic nerve and spinal cord. A phase two trial in progressive MS is currently recruiting. And that might be going on, I don't know, at OHSU. They did some of the earlier work. And having read about that, I have been taking alpha-lipoic acid as a supplement for quite a few years now. Mesitinib is an oral immunomodulatory medication being developed as a possible treatment for progressive forms of MS and other diseases. It belongs to a class of chemical compounds known as tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Positive results of a phase 2b-3 trial were recently reported in primary progressive and non-active secondary progressive MS. I made a video about this some time ago. I'm not sure it's up to the minute because it was quite a while ago, but I was pretty excited from what I had heard back then. I'll link the video in case you want to watch it. Minocycline is an oral antibiotic used to treat acne or bacterial infections, including respiratory and urinary tract infections. It is believed to have immunomodulatory, anti-inflammatory, and neuroprotective properties, all of which may have implications for MS. A phase three trial is currently recruiting patients with clinically isolated syndrome. And if you have that, you probably aren't watching this channel, so <laughs> I don't know. But if you know anyone, you can let them know. Nabiximols is an oral spray containing two of the main compounds found in the cannabis plant that is approved in some countries for easing MS-related spasticity. While the therapy is approved under the brand name Sativex in 25 countries, it has not been approved for use in the United States. So if you want to read more about that one, you can check out where it might be available. Remibrutinib is an oral treatment that potently and selectively inhibits the Bruton's tyrosine kinase enzyme, which plays a critical role in the inflammatory activity of certain immune cells, such as B cells and microglia. By blocking this protein, remibrutinib is expected to dampen the inflammatory activity that drives MS. Sounds good to me. Rituximab, this one's been around for a while. It's a monoclonal antibody currently being investigated as a potential therapy for MS. It is an approved treatment for various types of blood cancer and is marketed under the name Rituxan in the U.S. and Mabthera in Europe. It is currently used off-label for MS. A phase three trial in relapsing remitting MS is ongoing. The next one is simvastatin, and that is an approved statin commonly used to lower cholesterol. It is being studied as a potential treatment to slow the progression of MS. 
Statins have been shown to potentially have anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective properties. Several trials are potentially recruiting patients to test the treatment. There's something you might want to look at, so you can learn more about that by clicking on that link. The next one is Temelumab, and that is a selective monoclonal antibody being developed for the treatment of MS. Studies have suggested that Temelumab may reduce the body's inflammatory response. A phase two trial is currently recruiting patients with relapsing forms of MS. And again, you're going to see a lot of these trials are recruiting for people with relapsing MS. And I continue to say that one of the drivers of that is just the length of time. With relapsing MS, in theory, you'd be seeing some kind of result sooner than with progressive MS. At least that's my perspective on it. I know there are other reasons why relapsing is used probably because there's a larger market for, for treatments for relapsing MS. Okay, then there's tolibrutinib, which is an investigational oral therapy being developed to treat relapsing and progressive forms of MS. It is an oral and selective small molecule inhibitor of the Bruton tyrosine kinase enzyme, which is critical for the activity of multiple immune cell types involved in MS progression. And then last but not least, we have Vitoflutamus calcium, also known as IMU-838, is an experimental oral therapy with anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective properties that is being investigated for relapsing and progressive forms of MS. But as I said, I have to wonder what happened to some of the other therapies that we've been looking at like PIPE 307 or the CAR T-cell therapies or ABA 101, particularly the ones I've been excited about, the inverse vaccine and the nasal spray for Alamab. This is definitely not a comprehensive list, although there were quite a few that I had not been looking into before. So this has been useful, I think. I think the big thing to take away from this, as I've been saying in some of my other videos, is that it just shows how much interest there is in multiple sclerosis and not just treating the symptoms but trying to treat the root cause of it. I noticed a number of them specifically mentioned that they were looking at treating the, the underlying inflammation and smoldering MS that contributes so greatly to our progression. And if we don't get that stopped, we're never going to be able to declare victory on MS. And yeah, I know a lot of this is in the pipeline. It's going to take a long time for it all to hit the market if it, if it ever does. Some of this is not even going to make it that far. But I guess that uh, getting back to what I said, it's this interest level, which tells me there is a commitment and a determination to solve the problem of smoldering MS and continued disability and continued progression. So in that, we can be happy. Yeah, let me know though, if you have been involved in any of these clinical trials or if you're thinking that you might sign up for one of them, is there a particular one or ones that you're looking at and thinking that might be just the thing for me? Are there any on the list that you think I should look into a little bit more and make a video on and post for you? I know this was a short video, but it's timely and I just wanted it out there. So that is all I have for you today. So until my next video, please do keep taking really good care of yourself. And I'll see you again soon.